Hi, I'm John, the Money Systems Engineer, and these next two posts, the first one will be dealing with the Davos question of the economy. Are you confident the global growth will be restored in 2009? And the environment, will the environment lose out to the economy in 2009? Part two will be, should company executives have a code of ethics similar to doctors and lawyers? And will the Obama administration improve the state of the world in 2009? And finally, the Davos question on politics. Will the Obama administration improve the state of the world in 2009? Well, in politics, I have a particular claim to be able to state my opinion. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records as the losingest politician in the world. No one's lost more elections than I have before. And, uh, but then again, most politics is, has got lawyers in there. And, you know, lawyers are like the bright guys in class who weren't any good in math. And that's where those guys go into law. So they're still no good at math. But anyway, will Obama be able, his administration, improve the state of the world? Well, you would think that a guy who has some um, Christian background, Muslim background, will have an overview. And he's making all the right sounds. Almost. Unfortunately, he's making a big bad sound when it comes to Afghanistan, saying that Afghanistan is a righteous war that he's going to get deeper into. Well, look, you've got to be pretty stupid to not have noticed that your charcoal ain't melting your barbecue since 911. So how can you be stupid enough to believe that two plane loads of gas melted three steel buildings? Even if your engineers lie, it can't happen. Just check out your car, take out your charcoal, give it a chance, stick it in the barbecue, heat it as hot as you can, see if you can melt your barbecue. Then decide whether a little bit of kerosene could melt those buildings. So, 911 was taken down by professional engineers, and it wasn't by some Muslim in a cave in Afghanistan. And so when they sicked Canada as the patsy posse chasing the wrong guys who didn't do in Afghanistan, John Cretien's greatest mistake in his whole career. Here we are out there in a quagmire chasing the wrong guys. The Taliban had brought back peace to their land, had gotten rid almost of um, heroin cultivation and poppy cultivation, had brought peace, and we brought war back to them. And my country participated, and I'm ashamed. But it was because the sheriff sicked the posse on the wrong guy. Who was the sheriff? George Bush. Well, George Bush said he saw the first plane hit before he was told about the second plane hitting. And therefore, he was in on it. He got a clear view. He knew what happened. Therefore, what are we chasing the wrong guys in Afghanistan for? If Obama really wants to go after the guys who did 911, go after George Bush and the guys who documented the event for him. So... Get out of Afghanistan, then you'll have a chance at have some peace with the Muslim world. Until then, your words are going to fall flat. Because we know that they didn't melt three buildings, even if you, a lawyer, don't. Well, maybe you got better math than the average lawyer, but so far, if you believe that two plane loads of gasoline can melt three buildings, and you want to keep chasing the wrong guys in Afghanistan, the Obama administration will not improve the state of the world in 2009. Now, if Obama listened up and he either endorsed the Unilets resolution or he reprogrammed the Federal Reserve computers to issue loans to states and municipalities and people interest-free, or he set up a treasury banking system with time as one of the collaterals allowed for the creation of a loan, well then yeah, then he could really change things. And unfortunately, while there's this huge military industrial complex with billions in paychecks going to engineers building weapons of destruction. If he were to do that, well, there'd be a lot more unemployment. And you really can't cut back on paychecks to the engineers in the war machinery businesses because they ain't hiring in the tractor making businesses, you know, and farmers got no credit. The bankers don't give them credit, but they'll give the credit to the generals. So Maybe we got to take the credit card away from the generals and give it to the farmers so they can order that the steel be used by engineers building them tractors instead of by the generals ordering that they be building tanks. So, fixing the money system can divert the paychecks of the generals and the engineers out of war into production. And that's the only way we will ever be able to end that. So, fixing money again 
as the solution to the problem, and that can be done in so many ways, states issuing their own currencies, or the Fed, or the Treasury, or even a Unilex, whatever, as long as it's time-based and people are worth as much as gold, it'll work.